I want to talk to you from the thought, thought uh, leveling up, how to get to the next level. And uh, I want to kind of draw your attention to one passage of scripture in uh, 2 Timothy in the first chapter, verse 7, very familiar passage. And can we read this together out loud? For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a All right. There's nothing I'm going to say better than that, so you should cheer for that. Yeah. That's the word, the word we should get excited about. So here's the thing in this particular passage of scripture, as you see here, he says he's not given a spirit of fear. We understand the power. I think we understand the love, but I don't think we've kind of really got our minds around the sound mind. In the Hebrew, in the, in the Greek, this word sound mind actually meant disciplined. It really was the word that kind of said uh, to be able to put things in order. It was to be able to structure yourself in such a way that God's given you really the strength to be disciplined, but it's your choice. And oftentimes we, we kind of vacillate with our discipline because we tend to find ourselves leaning on our feelings more than our faith. And I know as men, we don't want to admit that we're leaning on our feelings, but oftentimes, if you feel some kind of way, I ain't doing it. I, I don't feel it. I ain't feeling like it. If I feel like serving, I'll serve. If I feel like coming, I'll come. If not, I'm not doing it. And we base our lives oftentimes more so on our feelings than our faith. And in order to ignite the sound mind principle, God has to have authority in the operation of how I move more so than how I feel. Meaning I cannot base what I'm going to do next on if I feel like doing it. Matter of fact, I want to challenge you that if you don't feel it, ask God. And if God says do it anyway, do it. That's the principle that we should function with. We should be tethered to the fact that there are often times that we will not feel like something. I uh, grew up running track, cross country that is. And I don't know what possessed me to want to run cross country. It's 3.1 miles into a, in a race. And I remember my coach would make us run. We only had to run 3.1 miles in the race but somehow he would make us run five miles to train. He said, go run five, yeah, someone else knows. He said, go run five miles. And you go, for what? The race is 3.1. He says, yeah, but I need to train your mind faster and longer, and then you can run the 3.1. I want you to practice five mile runs, six mile runs. And on the really bad days, you could practice a one mile run, but just know the next day you're giving me four more miles. So every time we would come to practice, Monday through Friday, we would run either one mile or the next day, four miles. He believed in five mile runs. He said, five mile runs will prepare you for a 3.1 mile run. I didn't like it, but I remember running and I was running, one mile went down, and I was like, oh, only, only, my mind kept saying, only 2.1 miles to go. Thank God it's not practice, it's the real thing. You missed it, I could tell, your enthusiasm's overwhelming me. <laughs> you missed it, watch this. Whenever God is trying to prepare you for you will always have to go through more and to be tested in order to do the real thing. So when you get into the real thing, it's cakewalk. Okay. Let me put it this way. Let's, let's, let me step back. There are six levels of life. It's on your sheet there, six levels. I, I didn't want you to have to fill nothing in because I want you to pay close attention. Six levels. Level one, aimless. You have no, no real early idea of what you're doing or where you're going. You have no direction. It's the beginning stages oftentimes. 
Even my son, he was there, he's going to be a police officer. He was a P1 first. He's like, dad, they don't let you get a gun. I said, you need not to have a gun at 20 years old because you need to know how to talk. And once you learn how to talk, I made him be class one first. I said, you need to learn how to talk so you don't run to your gun first. I said, then what we have to do is we have to learn how to roll. I want you to be able to fight. So years I put into him. He didn't know why I was taking him through fighting skills. He went through uh, uh, all the fighting skills of doing uh, mixed martial arts and so forth. And then I would have with me and we would roll and just kind of roll and make sure and I'm heavier and bigger than him and I'd roll with him he says ah, I'm gonna get you one day I'm gonna get you one day he's six one I'm only five nine and I would just like kind of just twist him up and twist him up I said I want you to be able to roll because I need you to be able to fight on the ground and then box standing up and he never knew we watched that process of training he gets to the academy now he's in police training and now he has to roll but he's rolling with a real police officer that's fighting with everybody teaching him and they rolling with him and he throws him around big guy he's throwing him around he goes hey because what are you doing are you trying to hurt me because i thought we were supposed to Take, take you out. And he's rolling and he's, he said, Dad, he comes home real excited. Dad, I put it on him. <laughs> I made him feel he, so much so that they made him the person that has to roll with the whole class. <laughs> but when he was aimless, he did not know what it was about. And many of our lives, as we begin it, we're in aimless there. Then the second one is stuck. You can envision yourself doing better, but you can't. You see to get out of your, your rut. You, you might work hard, but you're experiencing very little progress. You're just kind of stuck. Anybody there? Okay, all right. It's the third level. These first two levels, two and three, are generally where people are. The third level is coasting. You're going through the motions. Your life's on cruise control. You're, you're doing what you have to do, but that's it. Just doing, I'm just doing just enough for the city you're living. Just enough. Just enough. I'm doing just enough that my wife is happy, my kids are happy, my job is happy, I'm good. Just enough. I'm coasting. Don't disrupt it. Many people rest here. I go to church just enough. I serve God just enough. I, I give God just enough money. We, I, I just, just enough. I'm coasting. I feel good. Everything's good. Let's not disrupt it. Let's not mess it up. So many people are stuck in two and three, and some may not admit it, but if you find yourself there, by the end, we're going to pull you out. Amen? Amen? Then there's the, the developing. Developing. You're, you're steadily growing. This is when you're, 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 you're seeing incremental increases in every area, in your faith, in your finances, in your fitness. Everything's being worked on you, at some level. Your relationships, your career, everything is being developed. Meaning you have not surrendered to no gym. No, no gym time. Like you're not working out. Even though you're by, you eat, you, know, you don't stop eating, but you stop working out. Oh, I touched a sore spot. Okay. I'll stick to the notes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Those are, I can't. You understand? I can't. All I can do is this. That's a workout. Just change the fork and put a weight in it. <laughs> but when you have surrendered to coasting, you stop working the temple it's the temple of the living god you should never stop working it just like you should never stop worshiping just like you should never stop eating just so you should never are y'all catching me okay so watch this so we're developing i gotta move quicker okay come on let me move quicker um then there's thriving and this is really good thriving is you're operating in your sweet spot yeah this is good you don't have to do anything you get to do everything 
This is the sweet spot. Very few men make it here. Very few people make it in the thriving section. This is like, I get to do whatever I want. I get to live life. I get to help. I can give as much time to the church. I can serve my pastor. I can do whatever. I, I'm thriving. Money's being made on every front. I'm physically right. Everything's good. I'm thriving. Everything's good. God, thank you. Very few people get here. Turn to your neighbor and say, I can make it here. Yeah, we can get there. We can get there. You're going to have to level up. You are not going to make it to thriving unless you level up. The last one, shoo, this is mastery. You're going to heaven. <laughs> this is, I'm, at, I'm in heaven. You're doing as well that you're, you're in a place to help others do the same. This is mastery. You're at the level financially, physically, mentally with your family. And this, very few people make it here. I'm not here either. I want you to know I'm probably somewhere in the developing stage. I'm in that development area. I'm, I've come out of coasting. I'm in development. I'm trying to get to thriving. I'm not there yet either. Do you know where you are? I want every man to write, circle, if you have your notes, I need you to figure out and put where you are. I need you to circle it because no matter where you are, you need the next level. I can't stay at developing level. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm seeing growth, but it's not enough. I need thriving. I need to be able to do anything and everything I want to do that God tells me to do when God tells me to do it without fear of, of retaliation of my life. Y'all with me? You circle, I need you right where you are. You got it? Some of you didn't do anything. Some of you still asleep. Let's come on, shake yourself. Come on. You need to get this. You invest in yourself. I need you to catch this. You ready? You circle? You got it. You mentally circle. We're my mental circlers. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'll take you. So watch this. Now, now I need you to understand there's only two ways to really grow. This is not going to appear. You're going to have to write this down. There's only two ways to really grow. There's a active growth and passive growth. Let me teach this. Active growth is simply this. It's spiritual disciplines. It's, it's, uh, it's your spiritual strength. It's prayer. It's a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Active growth is things that you do. It's studying. It's going to college. It's, it's really developing you, and that's active growth. Active growth is something that you engage in, and, there, and you create a disciplined life in that automatically levels you up because you stay in it so much that you grow. Y'all with me? So, so that's you, you going to the gym. That's you with doing stuff for your wife and your family. It, it, whatever you do that you actively get better at. That's important. So it's not just taking out the garbage. It's, it's how, do I, how, how do I do it better? How do, I, how do I do home better? It's whatever you are actively doing that will make you be the best at what you do. How can I be the best husband, the best man for God, the best servant, the best? And it's what you train yourself in to do that. You with me? Come on. So here's the thing. How can I do this? I cannot do this. I haven't left my scripture without the sound mind. I must be disciplined to be able to do active growth. Are you ready for the second one? I don't like this one, but it's there. It's called passive growth. This is when God causes things to happen to you and you can't change it. It's called suffering. It shouldn't be called passive. I prob it probably should call something else, but I didn't name it. <laughs> and passive growth happens because something happened to you. This is when God uses things to grow you. It's called agitation. Unsolicited attacks. Yeah, it's when stuff happens and now God says, I'm training you, but I need to know if the training is working. Hear me, God, God never uses what he doesn't test. Come on, bring it up for them. Let them see it. Come on, watch this. I want you to catch it. Come with me. Come with me. Come with me. Okay, they'll come with me. So watch this. God never will never promote what he does not test there you go yeah. I, I said it improperly i know it threw you off so watch this he he can't do it so how he operates is he's going to offer passive growth elements in your life that 
are designed to test you to next level you. And what we don't realize is if you're disciplined enough, you'll get through it, but you have to understand that it's just a test. If it was a real emergency, God himself would come. You'd be like, God, please, I need you right now. Not another second, no a minute or an hour. I need you now. He said, no, 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 no. I'm here. Never left you. No forsaking you. I haven't gone away from you. I, I, I'm not far from you. I'm just, I'm just far enough to make sure that you got it. I'm, 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 I'm never, I'm surrounding you. Some of the stuff I got you in, I'm not letting the worst happen to you. You're just being tested. The testing is developing you. Okay, I got to prove it. 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 Let's prove this. I need examples. Watch this. Let me give you some examples. Here's some quick examples there. There should be in there. Oh, uh, and, and I don't know if they're on the notes there. They're going to be digital probably. Watch this. Joseph. Y'all know Joseph. I don't have time to go through it. Joseph, Genesis 37, 50. I put the scripture. You can read it and study at home. Joseph endures betrayal. Watch this. False accusations and prison. Understand this. Betrayal. False accusation and prison and still loved on the people who did it. God was just testing him. It was only a test. I need to know if you can handle the pit. I need to know if you can handle part of it. I need to know if you can handle prison. I need to know if you can handle betrayal and still have my love because God uses love and so does the enemy. When God uses love, what he does is he makes you better. When the enemy uses love, he makes you bitter. He funnels it through a way that now you're hurt in such a way you can no longer trust the same way. You can, I, can, I don't know, I've been there. But God says, I'll take love and watch this. I'll cause betrayal and everything to see if your love is genuine and unconditional. Oh, I don't have to. I got to go. I got to go. Okay. 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 Oh my gosh. God's purpose was to use Joseph and to, to level him up. You cannot level up without passive growth. It's not possible. I wish, I wish that I could get stronger by lifting lighter weight. <laughs> Boy, I'd be lifting lighter weight every day. Who's with me? Oh my goodness. Let me get up these five pounds. Hmm. I was like, oh, I, did. I don't know. It didn't work. I tried. To, I thought I was getting stronger. I, I, I don't get stronger lifting lighter weight. I found out though, watch this. This is what I found out. I used to lift really heavy. I used to do bench 320, 350. I used to do it like, yeah, yeah, get out there. I used to do that. I found out a secret that you could put the same weight on. I just put like, like maybe 150. I can figure out you could put 150 or 155. Instead of lifting it 10 times, lift it 20 to 30 times until it to fatigue. That's what I found out. And I could just keep lifting. I lift it until I feel like a like a pain in my chest. Throw it back up. Wait a little couple minutes, get back under it, and do it again 20, 30 more times until I can't, until I feel a pain in my chest. Throw it back up. And I do that. I keep doing it. And I'm like, whoo, everything's in pain. The next day I'm sore. But here's the thing what I do the next week is I say, let me see how strong I am. And what happens is I'll, I'm throwing on two plates. All right, 255 and three plates. I, put, I throw it on. I found out that if I lift, Look, 155, a ton of times, I still get stronger. You, you missed it. You missed it. Okay, okay. You missed it. Well, so what God says, even if it looks like your life, you're doing the same thing. He says, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it every single time until the next test comes and you'll realize you're stronger. Watch this. Let me move quicker. Moses, in uh, Exodus, despite struggles, he had identity issues. You don't have to raise your hand. Got identity issues. Ah, 
I stutter. I don't know, God, you want to use me? Why, why use me, God? I have identity issues. I'm not sure that I could do. I got personal limitations. I got, there's so much going on. And Moses, in spite of the personal limitations, in spite of the identity issues, God says, I'll put people around you and I'll put the right people around you and I'll level you up if you let me. Y'all know the story of Moses. Moses, he got leveled up, not by just his own. He had to really make some decisions. And I need each one of you today to realize that even with your personal limitations, God says, I'll still level you up if you give, if you give me a chance. God says, if you give me a chance, I'll level you up. But it requires you to pass the test. If not, you take the same test. Come on. How many people in the same has have been in the same test for a while? Where you where you at? Come on, it's okay. No, no, I'm 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 I've been in the test. Can I share a personal story real quick? I didn't grow up with my father. Met him when I was 26. I was married, and uh, so I grew up with my mom. My mom had me when she was 17 years old, and. I met my father at 26, 27 years old for the first time when I had found my brothers, the, his children. And, and my brother was getting married and wanted me to be in it. And he says, hey, just want to warn you, you're going to meet your father. And I said, okay, cool, I'm good. I'm all right. I meet him and he doesn't know what to do. He thinks I'm going to punch him in the face. He doesn't, you could tell he has this like little reserve. And I, I walk up to him and say, hey, sir, how are you? My name is Lydell Akins. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. You know, I think I'm your son. I'm, he says, yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah, oh, okay. Pleasure. Um, that was the extent of the conversation. I didn't talk to him anymore. He was like, it's, he went to go sit in the car. He was very, I don't know what was going on. He wouldn't talk to me. I was like, oh, man. So I started thinking to myself, something wrong with me. Am I, am I okay? Can I be real like this? I, I just want to make sure because you guys don't look like I could be real. So, so I, I, I'm like, okay, we have the wedding, wedding, everything happens. He sits in the car again. I don't get to talk to him. I never get to talk to him and go, oh my gosh, I never get to talk to him. But maybe this guy remembers me. I decide, okay, hey, anytime you want to have coffee, tea, I'd love to just meet you, get to know you. He goes, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, four years go by. Four years. I say four years. Four years go by. I go into DMV and I see him and I'm like, oh, shoot, my dad. Wow. Oh, I decide, let me just play the trick, you know. Hey, sir, do you remember me? He goes, oh, I'm sorry, I don't remember you. You, 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 you don't know me? Uh, let me give you my license. Nah, nah, man. Help me, help me understand who you are. I said, I think I'm your son you, I, we met before. Oh, yeah. I know you. Come on, y'all. I want y'all to. I, I want you to mentally play that through. Yeah, I'm going. Are you serious, God? This is fake. I wish it stopped there, but you know, pastoring and I'm like, okay, I don't see him anymore from there to there. Don't see him. A few more years go by. I'm now pastoring and he decides to have a child at the ripe old age of 70 something years old. And for some reason, my brother and sister decided that it'd be a great idea if I dedicate the baby back unto the Lord, my little, my little brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go, hmm, this must be a test. <laughs> it's got to be. It's got God written all over it. Some of you need to know when God is writing. When it looks like all hell is breaking loose and it looks like really crazy, you're like this. Oh, this is the devil. No. <laughs> this might be a test. So the test goes, let me move quicker. The test comes, I was like, okay, yeah, I sat with them. Hey, you need, you know, this is not some game. You need to give your life to Christ. You need to make sure the kid stays under the Lord and da, da, da. That's what it's about. This is not some fake thing. I need to show you in the Bible. This is where it came from. I'm going through the test. Boom, boom. They said, oh, yes, we want to do that. Oh, I dedicate the baby. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, heavens open up. There was a choir sitting in the corner right on the top of the roof singing Ave Maria. Ave Maria. I was like this. Yes, I did it. I said, maybe I'll see him in church. No, I didn't see him. 
four, four more years go by. Now he's about 74. He has another child. <laughs> the story gets better, y'all. Chill, relax, relax. It gets better. They're like, oh my God. Now I got a sister. And my brother and my sister did thinks that it's a great idea that I... <laughs> that I dedicate the baby. And I go, okay. yeah, sure. But this time, I'm harder. I'm stricter. If this baby is not being raised in the fear and admonition of God, if you don't raise this child in a way that they understand the Lord, I said back in the day, they would leave the children at the altar. Samuel, he was left there, and they would come back and visit him there. I'm not asking you to do that, but I want you to come close. I want you to make sure at least once a month, twice a month, uh, they come to church. The, the, you bring the children. Not my church. Go any church. He goes, I'll make a promise that that I'll do. That they both the fam- they both the wife, and then they both make this commitment. I said, great and dedicate the baby they start showing up to church and i remember on my 45th birthday 45th birthday it was the first time that i ever seen my father on father's day and on my birthday it was absolutely amazing yeah for, I, 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 let me make sure i got my ages right maybe 47 47 because something happens next and i'm going god i passed the test I really did. I still have never had a conversation longer than 10 to 15 minutes or 30 minutes that we have for a baby dedication. That that time that we had, I've never had a conversation with the man ever. I'm, sure, I'm going somewhere. I need you to catch this. I see him every Sunday. He comes in. Hey, hey guys, my father's here. Just amazed. Wonderful that he's serving. You know, the Lord is kind of touching his heart. COVID happens. My father gets COVID. He dies. They call me and ask me, would you do the funeral? God, this must be. It's a funeral during COVID. So not only do I have to do the funeral with 10 to few people, I now have to hold my laptop up to show everybody the body. And then preach a funeral of a man I barely knew. And God said, you passed that test. Whenever tragedy, somebody might be here you, and you've gone through something. And I shared that story, personal story to share with you. And I'm okay. I'm really good. I watched God develop me through each part of the process to say, could you love people when they don't do you right? Can you still be able to that's when you level up your life is when you're able to take a a, a great a extra grace required moment and level it up to be what god says it should be all right i'm looking at my time and i want to be exacto i gotta skip you all got the examples come on i gotta teach you something watch this here we go level okay okay I, I still want to be i don't want to go over there are four levels you must allow discipline to develop you in watch this the first one is discipline the bible says whoever loves discipline loves knowledge but whoever hates correction is stupid <laughs> i want you to, I, I did not this is the bible calling you stupid This is the Bible telling you, whenever you couldn't stand someone correcting you, you're stupid. Whenever you had a problem with the correction, you're stupid. Whenever you got so mad at the corrective purpose, I don't like that you, you're stupid. I'm in the Bible. Discipline will develop what you know and what you know will level your life off one level and on to the next level but it requires me to know something that means i have to look for correction you missed it you have to be close enough to your pastor that he can tell you anything and correct you and you're all right you have to have enough men in your circle that they can tell you 
that your stuff stinks and you're okay with it and you're like, okay. I went to my mentor, he's out in Texas, one of my mentors is out in Texas, and, um, and uh, I go out there with a consortium of pastors and we learn and develop and grow on how to be better at pastoring and teaching. And, um, and so uh, we go out there and he, he looks at our notes, he tells us, we, we plan out the whole year, and I go there four times a year, and we plan out how to do ministry better, and we li literally stay one night, 24 hours, I fly in for one night, 24 hours we stay, and we work for 10 to 15 hours, and we literally go through how to develop ministry at a high level, all right? He has uh, about 12,000 members, six locations, this Easter he's running 30 30,000 people and uh, eight, eight services. Just want to give you the caliber of person. He's something wrong with him. <laughs> he does. But I submitted myself to this process, watch this, and I go out there and I'm, I'm really excited, I'm stoked. I've been doing ministry for like, psh, it's been 20 years now. I got this, I got this. I'm in NG, Assemblies of God. I got the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with me. I get up there and I'm laying my stuff out. He makes us chart everything out. You put it on this big wall, you write it out. And I'm like this. I can't wait till we come and look at mine. I see him coming. He's looking at everybody else's stuff. I stand back. You know the feeling, right? When you know you did something really good. Where you at? You know what I'm talking about? What you think, sir? Doc, what you think? What do you think about my stuff? Yeah. He goes. Yeah, that sucks. It stinks. <laughs> you, you, you really thought, you thought, this is probably what you normally do. You did this before, haven't you? Because. <laughs> It was. It was what I do every year. It was what I, I knew. I was in a coast mode. And when you're in coast mode, you think you're a genius when you come around other people until you come around somebody else that's at another level and you realize you're just coasting life by. You're not, you're not driving. You're not developing. You're just doing what you thought was good and you're going around people that are lower than you, making you look good. You suck. That's what he said to me. See, you suck. You thought you were going to come in here with this childish game here. I went, <laughs> I got a few members, so, so you know, like, you get a little puffed up a little bit. I'm just saying, you get, you know, you know I'm like, who we talking to? Who he talking to? I'm saying what was on the inside. I didn't say it out loud. I'm just saying what's going on on the inside. Who you, who you think you talking to? Crazy? I'm like, what? All this was happening inside, didn't come out, but it was like, what? what? Felt like I should punk him or something like this? He's teaching me something. If you're in circles where you're the smartest person, you're stupid. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna hurry, oh, I gotta hurry up. Okay, come on, I gotta get, okay, come on, come on, let's move, let's move faster, let's move faster. I got, I got four minutes. I got to hurry up. Wait, skip to the end. Come on, let's go to the fourth slide. Put, put it all up there. Good. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I don't have enough time. I can't, I can't work this. I got to work this. I got I to go faster. Second thing is, discipline will prosper you and enlarge your influence. He says, whoever disregards discipline comes to poverty and shame. But whoever heeds correction is honored. That means if you have a financial issue, you're not in the right circle. You have to be where somebody can discipline you in every area, not just spiritually, but financially. I have to be, have, I have mentors in every area of my life. I have someone that helped trains me in the, in the gym. I get up every morning and they, they make me hurt every morning. Then I have a person that helps me. I, I fly to Texas to make me a better pastor. I, he also helps me with my marriage and make sure that I'm doing the right thing. And she could call him and tell on me. Who can tell on you? If you? No, not fake stuff. I mean real stuff. The real stuff you're doing wrong. 
who can tell on you and and your wife might not be able to correct you but what man could correct you at that level Ooh. i know you're like only god can you're stupid come on i gotta move i gotta move i gotta move i gotta move i got two minutes discipline creates borders to my integrity and desires and decisions he says no, I strike to, to blow my body and make it a slave so that after I preach to others, I myself won't be disqualified for the prize. So what happens is discipline is the thing that makes me integral. I have to live my life like every day, everything I do is always going to be under a light that there's never a secret. This discipline that does that. Am, y'all, are y'all catching me? And so I have to let discipline be the one that puts my desires in check. It's discipline that puts my decisions in check. I discipline myself not to what seems right, but what the word declares. And that's how I have to live my life. The borders are necessary to next level me. Let me get the last one. Your righteousness and your peace is trained by discipline. You don't have peace? It's not being trained. Look at the text. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. It says it's painful. Later on, however, it produces. What does it produce? Come on. A harvest of righteousness. A harvest of peace for those who have been trained by it. That means I have to be trained by pain. I have to be trained by passive growth. I have to be trained by what I'm going through in this season. But here's the great thing about God. He never lets us do it alone. You should be in a circle that should be partnering you to push you. If you're not with anyone in the circle, it's your fault. They used to say, told me leadership is lonely at the top. It's only lonely if you're not putting anybody around you. Whew. Okay, okay. No, no. I said, I'm, I'm, this is it. You sure? Uh, uh, no, no. I'm closing. Uh, uh, yeah, I got to close. Y'all are greedy. I could tell. I, 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 literally, I had to stop my slides because I have 30 slides and I had to cut back. So I 14. You're not getting the rest next year. <laughs> Watch this. You ready for this? I went to hang out with John Maxwell. It's a killer. You want to talk about a level up. John Maxwell, to sit in the presence of him, it's not Jesus, it's not God, I get it, don't get me wrong, but to to be around someone that can level you, can I give you what he gave me? I'm going to give you the level up method that John Maxwell, you would have to pay him to be there for four weeks or four, excuse me, four days for him to do this, what I'm going to give you in two minutes. Okay. Two minutes. I got you. Right. I got it. Okay. Watch this. It's called the cycle of success to level up your life. Here's how it works. You have to test everything. Let's go scripture. Everything should be tested. Try the spirit. Oh, come on, Bible people. Try the spirit. Okay, we got to, okay. Some people are still, okay. All right, it's okay, it's okay. Forget y'all, it's okay. I'm with you. Try the spirit by the spirit. So there's a testing. I have to test. I have to test everything over and over and over again. I want you to know I found out and he, he, he helped me. I couldn't figure out why I kept failing. But failure is necessary. You have to fail a whole lot to be successful. You have to fail more and fail faster. And watch this. You lose the door of opportunity from fear when you learn how to fail. And the reason why you are not leveling up your life and you're stuck in either coast mode or I don't want to say the other, I just say develop mode. If you're stuck in a mode, it's because you're not testing enough of the parts of your life. Meaning, where are you stepping out on faith? 
Where are you doing something that tries your faith? Where are you going beyond what is comfortable and pushing yourself past it? It takes discipline to fail over and over again. Watch this and learn. I'm not just talking about failure. Yes, we got moral failures. We got all these little failures that we get stuck in. But if you don't learn from it, if the same woman keeps tripping you up, you're stupid. I'm sorry. If the same thing is tripping you up, you're stupid. Oh, I know y'all like, I, first of all, let me just say something. I didn't make up the word. You've seen it in the scripture. So if you're saying, he keep calling me stupid. I ain't calling you stupid. God's calling you stupid. I'm just putting audible sound to it. You have to fail, 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 fail as much as possible. Let me tell you something. You know why I keep writing books? Let me tell you why. I keep writing books. My first book, it was like, to me, it didn't do what I thought. I thought everyone's going to read this book. No one wanted to write it, read it. It wasn't a failure. I, I just learned. I said, I'm going to write another book. And then I'm going to write another book. But here's what I found out. I'm not going to stop writing books. I'm not going to stop pushing and I'll stop growing in it. I keep writing. And this is what I found out. If one book hits, one book, all right, you do the math, one book, because they all might be failures. They're good books, good material, but the right people haven't seen it to get to the next level, for me to get to the next level. I know it's great content in it, but it hasn't gotten there. Watch this. One book. God said, one book sell 100000 at $20 a book. Where are my math people? Two million that year. So guess what? I say, hey, this is a good retirement plan. But I got to hurry up. I got to keep failing until it hits the right place. Uh, okay, okay. Maybe don't, don't think of my books. I need you to think about you. What in your life has to fail enough times and you learn from it in order to get to the next level? Watch the process. I test, I fail, I learn. Watch this. Grab the lesson from every failure because watch, the fruit of failure is success. The fruit of failure, if you fail long enough, watch this, the fruit is failure because success is making decisions from what you learn. Success is not an event. You don't get there. You don't arrive there. You make decision after decision from failure after failure and each time I test. I fail, I learn, watch this, I improve. But when I improve, watch this, improving is this. I understand the value of what I'm learning is improvement. When I understand it, but watch this, my next level happens after this. I test, I fail, I learn, I improve, next level. I test, I fail, I learn, watch this, I improve, next level. <laughs> well, check, check it. I, come on, with, with me. I, yes, I fail, I learn, I improve. Ah, it happens every single time in every area of your life if you test and you fail and you learn and you improve. Look in the Bible. Everywhere you see in the Bible, you will see a test, a fail, learning, improving the next level. Men, your next level is based off how you handle your tests, how you handle your failure, and how you learn. And improve to put you at your next level it'll make you have a sound mind can I pray for you could you stand God, level us up let us not just be hearers of the word, but let us be doers. 
God, I pray for every man today. You know personal struggles and personal integrity areas and personal this. And you know the, the, the finite details of every test and every failure. And where we have not learned right. God, would you help us move out of coast mode into developing, thriving, mastery in this season. God, I pray even now that you would touch our hearts, ring out the pain of hurt and failure and identity issues and personal failures. And God, let them be the ground for our new season. And so, Father, I pray for every man. You know our just the detail that's needed in this season. Let the next speaker continue to build on that and develop us to be the mighty men of valor that you called us to be. Father, we love you. And Father, we bless you even now. And we give your name the glory and the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. Well done.